This is the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV, and it's Mercedes' latest electric model. This is essentially an SUV version of the Mercedes-Benz EQS luxury sedan, which I reviewed last year, and it has a starting price of around $105,000. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this fantastic Tesla Model 3 Performance, which sold for $62,500, this wonderful Mercedes AMG C63, which sold for just under $45,000, and this great BMW M2 competition, which sold for just under $55,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection and free listings, check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the EQS SUV. But first, I want to thank Mercedes-Benz of Temecula for providing me with this EQS SUV. This is brand new, just arriving at dealerships, and Mercedes-Benz of Temecula has this one for now anyway. You can check out Mercedes-Benz of Temecula by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you again to Mercedes-Benz of Temecula. But let's talk EQS SUV. So you already know the EQS sedan. This is essentially just an SUV version. It rides on the very same platform, it has the very same wheelbase, it's taller and obviously it's larger inside. And the EQS SUV has available three-row seating, which of course the sedan doesn't have. So two versions of the EQS SUV, this is the 450 Plus, that's the base model, or you can step up to the 580. The 450 Plus has 355 horsepower and about 305 miles of range. If you get the 580, you're looking at more like 540 horsepower, but range goes down to about 285 miles. And by the way, speaking of range, Mercedes says the EQS SUV is fast charging capable. If you can find the right charger, it'll go from 10% to 80% in just 30 minutes, which is a pretty quick recharge. Now, as for pricing, the EQS SUV starts around $105,000 in its most basic form, and the top version of the EQS 580 starts around $134,000. Pricing is pretty much identical identical to the EQS sedan. You can just choose, would you rather have a sedan or an SUV? But anyway, time for the quirks and features of the EQS SUV. And I'm gonna start inside, where you get inside, and the first thing you notice is this big, expansive, flat dashboard. And that's because the EQS SUV is offered with the hyper screen. This is a 56 inch screen that stretches basically from side to side in the EQS, and it's available in the sedan and the SUV. Now this particular EQS SUV doesn't have it. You can see in Instead, it has a standard screen, which itself is pretty large and pretty impressive. But I reviewed the EQS sedan last year with the hyper screen, if you want to see more info on that and exactly how it all works. Now, it's worth pointing out that the majority of EQS sedan models seem to be ordered with this, the standard screen, which is still quite large. So I figured it would make sense to review an SUV version with the standard screen, since that's what most people will be getting. And I must say, even the standard non-hyper screen is pretty good. This is Mercedes-Benz MB. UX system, and I find that it works fantastically. Very responsive, very intuitive, very well laid out, and there are some truly amazing quirks and features within this screen. One of those is the air quality indicator, which not only shows you the quality of the air inside the EQS, but also outside, plus a little animation showing it getting purified as it comes through and into the cabin, which is kind of cool to see. You can monitor the quality of the air in real time as you're driving along to make sure your interior your air quality is fantastic. And speaking of air quality in this interior, you can also add a fragrance. You can turn it on here, and as long as the vial of fragrance has been inserted in the glove box, it will puff out fragrant air periodically through the climate control vents if you have it on, which is hilarious. And check out this feature with the screen. This little black square directly below the screen is a fingerprint reader. You get into your car, and maybe the key you use is tied to your driver's settings. Well, in this, forget about all that. You climb inside, 
put your fingerprint on the sensor, and as long as you've hooked up your driver profile, everything will adjust to the way you have it set. Your seat, your steering wheel, your infotainment presets all match up to your fingerprint, which you have programmed into the car. And then there's the range screen, which is incredibly cool because it shows you exactly what you could be doing to maximize your range. It shows you all of the different things in the car that are kind of stealing range. And in the center, this is actually a giant button you can press in order to fully maximize your range. If you press that, all of that stuff stealing range is turned off in order to give you the best possible range. And you can see it actually happens and then the screen itself turns off because that's one of those things that's stealing your range. And of course you can turn it back on if you want to and get out of that mode, but if you're coming down to the last few miles and you want to maximize your range, one tap and it's maximized. And check this out, here's a fantastic camera system in this car. No surprise considering it's sort of flagship electric luxury SUV, should have a nice camera, but it does high resolution and it functions great. And of course there is a massaging feature for the front seat occupants. You can turn on a massage and choose from many different types of massage. So if you have one type you like better, it's not just on or off, you can select the massage that works perfectly for you and your comfort level. Amazingly, that's not the craziest thing in the massage screen though, because scroll down to the bottom and there are workouts that you can do. If you turn on a workout, the car will actually show you different pressure points it wants you to press with your butt and your back. You press against the seat and the thinking is that'll keep you from tensing up on a long drive or sitting in one position too long, you can actually do a workout through a workout program in your infotainment system while you're driving along. But beyond the center screen, there are still many quirks and features in here. For example, the sunroof opener. Not a button or a switch like in most cars. Instead, you swipe your finger on this panel and it opens up. And you can see it actually opens. You swipe your finger the opposite direction and it closes. No boring switches in here. Instead, you have a finger swiper. And it works the same way for the sunshade. If that's closed, swipe it and then the sunshade opens. And you can also just tap this little swiper if you want to stop it at any point. Swipe the opposite direction and it closes right up again. And speaking of swiping stuff, this car doesn't have a traditional volume dial like a lot of cars. Instead, it's a little swiper located here directly below the center console. You swipe left or right and that turns the volume up or down while you're driving along. Of course, the driver has their own volume control on the steering wheel. This is more for the passenger but even the driver's steering wheel volume control is a swiper. You swipe your thumb up or down to change the volume. Forget about traditional buttons and dials in here, a lot of swiping. But anyway, next I want to move on to the gauge cluster screen, which is excellent. You can see it has a lot of different information and it's also tremendously configurable. You can use it to show you just about anything you might want to see with the car, including a giant navigation map if you want. It's really useful and really helpful, but it also has one of the weirdest available display screens I have ever seen. It's called the sport screen and if you go to it, well there are a bunch of weird lines on each side that kind of mimic the level of accelerator pedal that you're giving it, which is odd in itself, but the weirdest part is in the center where you have this orb. This is a g-force meter, but the way they're showing it is so strange. It almost looks like a UFO and it kind of dances and goes forward and backward and up and down depending on what g-forces it's measuring. This is certainly the strangest way I've ever seen g-forces measured and one of the strangest displays I've ever seen in any car, but it's there and that's how it works. And next we move on to the back seat in the EQS SUV, which is, well, quite large actually. No real surprise considering this is like a flagship full-size luxury SUV, but it's nice back here. I got good knee room, leg room, head room. You got a lot of space. And the back seat is also adjustable. You have little seat controls on the door, as you can see, to move the seat forward or backward automatically. Power adjustments for the bottom and the backrest, which adds to the luxury experience back here. Now also in back, you have a screen in the center for climate controls, two more climate zones in the rear, in addition to the two up front. So four climate zones in this particular model, which is nice to have. You also have individual climate vents back here. And if you open up this little panel below the climate controls, you have two USB-C ports presented directly to you so rear passengers can charge their devices. Now, one other thing the EQS SUV offers in terms of rear seating is a third row. This particular one is not equipped with it, but 
but it's an option and that'll be a big distinguishing feature between this and the EQS sedan that you can get three row seating in the SUV. Again, not here and it's optional, but it is available. One other thing worth noting in terms of rear seating for the EQS, you have these little pillowy headrests that just feel so fantastically good. You put your head on them and you can really relax in the back of your electric luxury SUV. The hand next we move around back in the EQS SUV where you'll see a very distinctive light bar going across the rear. It looks kind of cool and futuristic with the taillights, especially over on the sides, kind of an unusual design. But I want to talk about cargo space. We'll start by getting into the cargo area, which has a little trick to it. There's no latch back here and there's no little popper above the license plate like in so many cars. Instead, the tailgate is open by pushing the top of the Mercedes-Benz logo and then it opens right up. Take another look at that. Press the top of the Mercedes logo and then the tailgate opens up revealing the cargo area. And by the way, before I get into the EQS SUV cargo area, one other cool thing about that Mercedes logo in back, it's also hiding the backup camera. When you shift into reverse, it pops out on the bottom and that's where the backup camera is stored until you need it. And then you back up and then when you go forward and drive off, the logo retreats back into the tailgate and then it looks normal again, hiding the backup camera and the tailgate popper. But to the cargo area, which you can see is actually quite large, a spacious, big cargo area back here. And that's in part because this EQS SUV isn't equipped with the third row seating. So instead, it's just got a lot of cargo space for all your stuff. Worth pointing out one nice luxury SUV touch, little switches over on the side of the cargo area that you can press to lower the second row of seats if you want more space. You can put them down very easily and these switches will also bring them back up electronically so you don't have to go around fiddle with any latches. You can do it all from the cargo area with the push of a button. Now, also located around back, you can see this little fuel door, which you might think is strange because this is a fully electric SUV. And as you might expect, it contains the charge port. You open it up, you can see that's where the charge port is. You plug it in through there and you charge it. Pretty simple. But then you're thinking, well, what exactly is this? If the charge port is around back, like I already showed you, what is this little panel on the front fender? Is it a second charge port perhaps, or maybe some sort of weird sensor? No, it's far simpler than that. You pop this open and you can see the windshield washer fluid logo. This is where you insert windshield washer fluid into the EQS SUV. And the reason for that is the front compartment does not open. There's no front trunk. The hood doesn't come up. You can't get in there. And so there's no place to put in washer fluid except for this dedicated panel on the fender just for washer fluid, which is very strange, but that's what they've done. But anyway, since I'm up front to the EQS SUV, let's talk about the front. And specifically, let's start with why the front doesn't open. In a lot of EVs, it opens up. There's a little storage compartment in here, but not in this one. The reason I've been told is there is a giant air cleaner in here. That thing on the screen that showed you how the air was being cleaned as it came into the cabin, apparently that happens in here. And so there's no room for storage. And I'm sure there's other mechanical components in here that also steal space. And so there's not any room left for storage. So they figure just don't let you in. Now, the other interesting thing up front is the grill, which isn't exactly a grill in an electric car because an electric car doesn't need one. Instead, it's just a giant panel. And when you look at it far away, you can see there are some designs on it. When you get closer, you see it's tiny Mercedes-Benz stars, dozens of tiny Mercedes-Benz stars distributed all around the grill, which is certainly an interesting look, very distinctive. And frankly, I think it's kind of cool, even though it's also a little stupid. Now, on the subject of exterior design, I do want to talk about the general shape of the EQS SUV. And I'm going to start that by talking about the EQS sedan, which has not been tremendously well received. A lot of people think it looks egg shape. People think it's ugly. Most people don't like it. Well, good news, the EQS SUV is a lot more generic, more traditional, and less daring and weird like the EQS sedan. With that said, I do think the EQS SUV has kind of a modern day R-Class vibe to it. That was the Mercedes-Benz kind of large minivan thing they sold in the late 2000s and early 2010s. This sort of feels like that resurrected as an electric vehicle, sort of a long body, kind of a low roof. It feels a little like a modern R-Class, but it's not ugly and I suspect it'll be far less controversial than the EQS sedan is. As for sizing, well, it's pretty big. Three row luxury SUV, as you can imagine, it's not exactly 
relatively small, but it's not quite as big as other massive luxury SUVs. It's shorter than a BMW X7 by about two inches, and it's about four inches shorter than Mercedes' own GLS full-size luxury SUV, so it's a little smaller than those. But still, over 200 inches long, definitely a full-size luxury SUV. Also worth pointing out, since I'm outside the EQ SUV, a couple other interesting things. One is the door handles. You can see right now they are flush with the body to preserve the look and the aerodynamics when the car is locked. But you go to unlock it and the door handles pop out, and then you can reach inside and grab them and open the door. And when they pop out, you can see it says Mercedes-Benz on a little aluminum piece of the door handle that is otherwise hidden but exposed when the door handles are out to remind you of your cool luxury brand. Also, one other item worth pointing out with the EQS SUV, all of these come standard with air suspension, so adjustable ride height and a nice cushy ride, and they also come standard with rear wheel steering, which definitely improves your turning radius. You can watch rear wheel steering in action right here. Take a close look at the rear wheels to see them turn. I'm driving the EQS SUV. Now, I am one of the few people who really likes the EQS sedan. I think it's weird looking, but I don't mind it. I think it's kind of cool and futuristic and I like the quirky and weird stuff. But more importantly, I really like how it drives. I love a good luxury car and I think that the driving and riding experience in that car is unbelievable. Um, on the level of S-Class, possibly and probably ahead of it. It is so comfortable and so relaxed. And uh, driving the EQS SUV around, I've already driven it a few miles, I can tell you this feels the same. It is so comfortable and luxurious and just nice in here. It is so, so, so nice. It feels so good, it feels so luxurious. There's a couple reasons why. Number one, you can't hear anything that goes on out there. Everything out there in the world is irrelevant to you. This car is shockingly comfortable and shockingly just like quiet and silent. You also just have an unbelievable ride quality in here. Um, I'm not entirely sure how Mercedes-Benz has managed to do this. I've been in a zillion electric cars, many of which are great, none of which ride like the EQS sedan and the EQS SUV. The luxury quotient is just incredible. They ju it just feels so comfortable, like you're just being coddled as you're driving along. It is not on the level of a Bentley, Rolls-Royce, but it's like, it's just up there with an S-Class and it's nicer than a GLS, I will tell you that. It feels more luxurious, more relaxed, more calm in here than a GLS, there's no doubt about that. Now, this is the EQS 450 Plus SUV, which is, like I said, the base model. I think it had something like 355 horsepower. Flooring it here, it's good, it's quick, it's fine. Um, not incredible or amazing in any way, but it kind of is in keeping with the character of the car. And I wonder if the EQS 580 might actually feel a little like too fast. Like that's not why people want to buy these. I suspect these are going to be purchased by luxury car consumers. There is no sport bend to this car, uh, or at least that's what it feels like to me. Um, with that said, the steering is surprisingly sharp. <laughs> Uh, more precise and kind of quicker and sharper than I was expecting. It's odd actually how kind of quickly the steering goes and, and how uh, sharp it is, especially for a vehicle this size. But that's not to say that I'm gonna start throwing it around corners. This is a big, heavy vehicle and, and you wanna distinguish between steering and handling. The steering is quicker than, you, than it should be, frankly, for a vehicle like this. The handling, I mean, it's a massive SUV. It's not gonna feel great when you're kind of plotting it around corners. Now, with that said, body roll is more controlled than I was expecting and sharp turns. I've taken it on a couple and um, it's, it's a little bit more composed. This whole vehicle is just more composed than I thought. Frankly, this whole vehicle is better than I thought. I had a similar reaction to the EQS sedan. Like there hasn't been a lot of hype around these vehicles. People think they look weird. They're kind of confusingly named. Why is there an SUV and a sedan named the same thing? Doesn't make any sense. But if you get past that, they're actually really nice luxury cars. And frankly, I think these are at the forefront of the like luxury quality feel of anything that Mercedes-Benz is making right now. Um, I'm just really impressed. I really like these EQS vehicles. I love the tech in them. If I were to get this, I would get it with a third row and with the hyperscreen, which I think are two of its like coolest features. This vehicle has neither, but that's how I would get it. But regardless, you're driving around in like a fantastic new luxury vehicle and it feels 
fantastic, and luxury. And by the way, one other word I want to say, Mercedes-Benz driver assist tech. I've reviewed it in a lot of different Mercedes-Benz models now, so I don't want to get too into it. But in a luxury car, it's worth talking about. Um, it drives really well for you, essentially. You're on the freeway, it'll steer for you as long as your hand is on the steering wheel, and it's pretty good at knowing when your hand is on the wheel, so you don't have to constantly be babysitting it. Um, it. It does a great job of speeding up, slowing down, maintaining the lane, even around curves. Mercedes driver assist is fantastic, and up there with the very best. There's a lot of good systems out there now, and Mercedes is just as good as the good ones. And so that's the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV. This is an impressive SUV, and although the naming is a bit confusing, it is another step forward for Mercedes-Benz in electrifying their lineup. And now it's time to give the EQS SUV a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 62 out of 100, which places the EQS SUV here against other relevant cars. It beats out other luxury EV SUVs like the Audi e-tron and Cadillac Lyric, but the EQS SUV doesn't beat out the sedan version, which is unusual, but that's because the EQS SUV I reviewed had less equipment than the sedan I reviewed and no third row seating. If you get an EQS SUV, you really should go all out, get the huge dashboard screen and three row seating. Then it's probably the best electric electric SUV from a luxury perspective. Personally though, I would still rather have a Rivian for the performance and off-road capability, but I do have a lot more trust in Mercedes-Benz than Rivian for reliability and longevity. 